All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to One More Guitar. Thank you for checking out the channel. Um, it's my buddy, Matt. Hey. Today, we're going to do something a little different. Oh, first, I want to say uh, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to everybody. Uh, whatever you're celebrating, I hope you're having a good break. Um, but today, we're going to do something a little different. I wanted to try an experiment since I'm off work and I've got some time to kill and thought I'd put together some videos here to, you know, have a little fun. So what we're going to do is we're going to sit around, drink some beer, talk about our favorite 90s albums. Heck yeah. Um, so yeah, we definitely want to try something fun here. If you like it, uh, let me know in the comments. Maybe we can do some other decades or, you know, maybe one hit wonder songs or, um, you know. A two hit wonders. Two hit wonders. Yeah. Album, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Albums that you uh, uh, albums hate. that you love to hate on. So yeah, just let us know if you like this, and uh, maybe we can keep doing this kind of fun stuff. So this video is definitely not about any you know quality content here. This is just for entertainment. Yeah. So um, so what we're gonna do is we've got we've picked our top five each, and um, so I've been kind of going back and forth with Matt, and I knew the stuff that he had on his list, and he knew what I had on mine, and, uh, but we kind of kept it separate just so we can have unique albums to talk about, and. Um, so there's definitely stuff on his list that would have made my list, and I don't know if that's true in reverse, but, uh, yeah. you know. Um, but, yeah, so we picked our top five, and then we'll talk about kind of how we got to those top five, you know, some of the stuff that we uh, considered when we were looking at this. So yeah. uh, anything else? Is no, that, uh, that's it. All right, well, let's get going. Sweet. So we're going to start with the stuff that Matt considered when he was looking at putting together his top five list. So uh, I'm going to let him talk about that and go through his honorable mentions. Yeah. So really for me, it was what album can I listen to beginning to end that I really liked. For me, it didn't matter like how many albums they sold or how big or small the band was or how obscure the band was or anything like that. It was just like purely about did I like these jams that they were presenting. How much good music. In the 90s, it was like, I was like, oh my gosh, how did I forget about this band as I'm oh, going no, through all this, this stuff? This was tough. This and was so tough. it was really difficult. Yeah. So getting five and then getting to do two honorable mentions was made it a little bit better. Yeah. Um, so yeah. the first one was, I know, Dave Matthews Band. Pause for the hate. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> Under the Table and Dreaming, Dave Matthews was the first concert I ever went to when I was in seventh or eighth grade. I had a, just gotten a killer bowl cut that day, I remember it. <laughs> my grandma took me to the barber that she knew that cut my granddad's hair, I'm sure, for decades. Uh, I was the, the <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. I was the dorkiest kid there, I have no doubt about it. This obviously made the list because like every song on there, I can hear it and I can hum it in my mind yeah. as I'm talking about the songs. So, like Any of these songs on this list, cool. killer. Um, so for this, you know, even though I've kind of talked smack about this album over years, I'm pretty open-minded, and I know my tastes have changed. So uh, I checked this album out again, and I definitely... Still sucks. It still sucks. <laughs> I hate it. I absolutely hate it. There's some really unique, interesting guitar parts on this album, for sure. Let's move on to uh, the next honorable mention here. Cool. Yeah. Here we go. Tonic yeah. uh, Lemon Parade, a little bit after the whole grunge mm -hmm. thing. I, I don't even know if you could call them alternative either. I think they're just kind of... Just a little rock band. Just a little rock band. Mm -hmm. Not even sure where they're from. Probably California. But this <laughs> song had some like... I didn't appreciate this song until I got a little bit older. And then, man, I was like, gosh, this album is just killer. Not every song is a banger. I'll go yeah. and throw that one out there. There's a couple I'm like, okay. Yeah. But, and, but man, the ones that are good, and most of them are good... Are killer. Oh yeah, but so yeah. that was good. Yeah. So, all right, drum yeah. roll into Matt's top five. Here we five go. Here. This album is one of the ones that I was like, the from start to bottom, I can listen to this album beginning to end. Yeah. So good. This band was like so underappreciated. It's true. They were played like all over the record, all over the uh, all over the radio. Where we, where I used to live in Birmingham, yeah, one hundred seven seven the X, big ups. Yeah, they used to do live in the X lounge, live in the X lounge, and so they came through and they did, yeah, whatever for one of those albums. So you can find those on YouTube somewhere. 
Um, but yeah, stuff like whatever was their big single, and then I think God can explain. I yeah, think that, that was another big that was single. a single, yeah, for sure. But then you've got songs that are like the deep cuts, like uh, Monotone and Space Boy. Both of those are and great. Cigarette Spe- specials, good Gosh, too. Yeah, so good. I like the first track on there too. That I don't understand. I oh, remember yeah. I got this album when it came out. Yeah. And that same buddy I was talking about, uh, me and him had seen them. I think we saw them in Birmingham. We did. We saw them at the uh, Oak Mountain there. Yeah. And. Um, I, they put on a great show. Like, the guy is really energetic. He had a really powerful, strong voice. And that band, I mean, they played really well. Yeah. Um, when I was listening back through this album for this video, um, I kept just picturing it live. Of, and I only saw them one time. So, I mean, it was strong enough impression to me for me to remember their set live as I heard <laughs> these songs on their album, you know? Yeah. I definitely am happy you added this on the list because <laughs> it's an album I kind of had forgotten about, really. But, yeah. all right, so let's see. Number four. Number four, What's the Story? Morning Glory, by the way. So what a great album. So this album is so good for different reasons. And I feel like everybody's like, okay, everybody knows Wonderwall. Everybody, everybody knows yeah. Don't Look Back in Anger. Champagne Supernova. Then you got stuff like Roll With It yeah. and Hello. Hello's great. Gosh. Man, uh, Hey Now is good. Some hey might great. say some might say it's one of my favorite ones on there. And, say, and she's say electric, it's a great too. Song. Hell, Morning Glory is a great song. I mean, yeah. it's really a, a very good album. Very well produced, yeah. very well done. What do you think your favorite song on this album is? Uh, I like Hey Now. I like Roll With It. I'm not a, purposely avoiding like Wonderwall and Don't Look Back in Anger and Champagne Supernova because they are massive. It's yeah. just because I've heard them so much. Yeah, I know. And so it's like, I, it, they're just not as fresh to me as some of these other songs. And so going back and listening to albums yeah. from the 90s and be like, oh my gosh. Yeah. This song, I forgot about it, yeah, you know, yeah, and it's yeah. like all these memories that come back with it. And so some of that, some of the nostalgia. And yeah. so I would, it'd be hard to nail down exactly one, but I really, I like Roll With It. I like Hello. Yeah. Uh, some might say, like you mentioned, it's another great one. Yeah, let's move on to number three. Number three, The Foo Fighters. Yes. So my sister got me this album when I was in ninth grade. And so I believe it came out in 97, but I don't think I got it until like 99 or something yeah. like that. Uh, anyway, so this album was really cool for me because huge fan of Nirvana. Um, I really loved in, Ut- in Utero. Really loved Nevermind. Um, and then I really loved the Foo Fighters' first album. It was different in some ways. Like he had stuff like Big Me, which I was yeah, not yeah, expecting yeah, yeah. to come out. Oh yeah. yeah and yeah. then he had stuff like I Come Around or whatever. And it's like, oh my gosh. Oh man, it There's is some so good stuff different. On that first album too, and so yeah. I was like, I was so interested to see where Dave Grohl was going to take it. And then when he went in this direction. He got this whole band together. He did his own thing, and it just turned out so oh, well. Man. I will absolutely say that this would have been in my list. I don't know if it. I think it would have made my top five, but it definitely would have been in consideration. Yeah. I love this album. I listened to it all the time when I was a kid. Yep. So let's talk about this album real quick. Yeah. Just, so obviously you've got the big ones. You've got Monkey Wrench. You've got My Hero, which is in every uh, sports all movie the from '97 yeah. to about 2007. Varsity Blues. Varsity Blues. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's another soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good soundtrack. It is a good soundtrack. It's got some jams. Mm-hmm. Um, you've got Everlong. Everlong, so um, great. You've got Walking the, After You, which I thought was a killer yeah. little low key song, which didn't get enough. See, all of my favorite stuff was, is, I mean, even though I love those singles, I mean, Everlong is much as it got played i still love that but mm. man hey johnny park my poor yes. brain wind up up in arms all of those just so, so good you know the first i just feel like like you could, you could talk about the songs in this album for so long oh i know i it, feel like they're just so well done it's so good all the way through great album great mm-hmm. album so definitely uh yeah, yeah so that's why it's at number three for me yeah. right can't, now. <laughs> i can't say enough about it i love it yeah all right <clears throat> so got another beer and a hat and uh, now we're moving on to uh, Matt's uh, number two Try album here. Number dose. Uh, okay. <clears throat> yes. So Bush, 16 Stone. Um, let me start off from the beginning with this album. Right, go for it. From the, here's the story for this album. I bought this album. It was the first album I ever bought. First CD I ever bought. Uh, about 1996 with my own money that I didn't get for like Christmas or something like mm-hmm. that. Um, love this album. Would listen to the whole thing start to finish. Um, there's some weird songs like Ex Girlfriend. It was like 45 seconds long. 
I kind of liked that one when I was really? looking at this too because it reminds me of the Ramones. It's very, oh, yeah. very Ramones ish, you know? Yeah. yeah. And then I found like songs like Alien that were like just so different from everything else that's on the album. Yeah. You know, like you've got killer songs like uh, Everything's In. I thought that was a great starter track. Yep, yep. Um, I like Swim even. Uh, Little Things was great. Come Down, obviously great. Machine Head and Glycerine. Everybody knows those songs, but like. Yeah. Man, this album had some songs on it that like did not get enough attention, yeah. and so like I loved this album. I was so glad when I bought it. I remember bringing it in, showing my sisters, and they were like, "You got this album?" I was like, "Yeah, I got this album." They go, "Where's the lyric sheet?" Because we wanted to flip through and find the lyrics to Glycerine to be like, "What is he saying? What's he talking what about? What is he saying? Bad Moon White again? Yeah. What is he saying right there?" It's like to this day, I don't know. So That's if anyone fun, knows, man. don't tell me in the comments because I don't care anymore. <laughs> I listened back to this one, and um, I have to say, I didn't like it as much as I thought I remembered liking it, although mm. all of the singles on this album are fantastic. Um, I'll say for me, my favorite one on the album is Machine. Yeah, I always love that song. Um, I've seen it. Just gets me going. It does. I don't know what it's it a great is. Song. Something it's about a great it. song. Um, but yeah, I was listening back to the album, and I felt like, for me, it was, parts of it seemed to really try to get into that grunge thing. Like, yes, they were really trying to um, take advantage of that uh, time period that was going on there. I also didn't realize that 16 stone was like used as like a oh, unit of measure. Yeah. I was like... They said that's about, what, 250 or something like that? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. I think I'm like 11 stone, 10 stone. I don't know what it is. I'm probably 16. <laughs> Give me a couple more beers. Yeah. Be seventeen stone. Well, thanks. I mean, Christmas <laughs> yeah. is soon. Yeah, we'll see in January yeah. how many stone we are. The da, final, da, da, da. my favorite album Ooh. from the '90s. Fantastic album. Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness, or just simply Melancholy, yeah. or MC, or just that really good one from okay. Smashing Pumpkins. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that yeah. double disc. And then, so this one was the first one I was telling Kyle earlier that where I was like, I realized like how important the album artwork is to an album. This was the album that like showed me that. And so everyone knows double disc, like two and a half hours long. It's a long one. And it's hard to talk about having a f one favorite song because it's also, not also different, but it just covers so much ground. So you've got things like Melancholy, which is just a big piano track. Because oh, you come out of song. you come out of Gish with Siamese Dream, and it's like, oh my gosh, these guys. And then you come in from Siamese Dream to Melancholy, and you're just like, why are you starting? Like, what is oh, that? Yeah. Like, how does this set the tone? Well, I've read that, kind of stuff. Um, that they, in their first couple albums, they had the same producer, and even Billy Corgan was saying that he felt like the band had run its course, oh, really? that they were kind of hitting a wall and uh, so they got a different producer and um, and he said they went into this thinking that this was going to be their last album huh. and uh, but God so, made magic you know you start off with the piano into Tonight Tonight and it kind of you know sets an atmospheric stage there you yeah. know but then Jelly Belly you get the Jelly Belly and it kicks it back up yeah I mean it's just it's so good it, all it um, here is Noah and Bullet with Butterfly Wings Man, I love Bullet Butterfly. I mean, hell yeah, Bullet with Butterfly Wings was fantastic. I remember the first time I heard that, I was, again, it was either listening to the X or maybe KDF back in the day, which was from Nashville. I remember they played it on the morning show. They, people that didn't live in the 90s, this is the kind of stuff that was like mainstream, you know? Yeah. So on the morning show, on the way to the school, I hear Bullet with Butterfly Wings. I mean, talk about starting a day, <laughs> you know? Like I was like, oh my day. God, like what is this? <laughs> Dude, I was I was hooked on that. I, I loved that song immediately. Yeah. I know that's another thing. They had 57 songs for this album I read and uh, <laughs> they narrowed it down to 28, but apparently they were just on a huge creative spree. So yeah. let's take a look at the second disc here. And, yeah. Um, this is a, the second disc. Gosh. I mean, the second part is so good too. Yeah, it's it's a lot more eclectic. I mean, you get the first yeah. two tracks are kind of rocking, I think, just to kind of bring you into the second album. Through but, the Eyes of Ruby is a good one. But yeah, um, oh that yeah, was yeah. The Scorched Earth. Yeah, good yeah, dude, that one's that <laughs> one's great. I like I like X Y U. I think that's a really good one. It worked I, out. I really love this album. Like, okay, so now we're gonna get into my honorable mentions. There's a lot of albums I love in the '90s, and comparing one to the other and saying, yeah, I like this one more than that one, and that definitely shoots up the list. That was tough for me. So what I did was I created a bracket. And um, I picked 16 of my favorite albums from the 90s that did not include anything that Matt was putting on his list. That helped me narrow it down. That's the only reason I did that, really. Yeah. 
and just so we'd have unique things to talk about. But so here are my first matchups. And we're back. And we're back. <laughs> All right. So now let's look at, I think my top five is what's next. Yeah. All right. So let's see what I had here. I don't even remember. Number presidents five, of the presidents. United States. I had to go with presidents number five. It was tough to pick a number five. Man, I love this album. Like I mentioned a minute ago, it just it makes me grin all the way through. Um, Bowl Weevil. Oh yeah, Bowl Weevil's so good. Doom Buggy. <laughs> I'm remembering some of these songs as I'm looking oh, through them yeah. again. Yeah. There were some songs on here, you know, that I didn't like as much when I first started listening to this album when I got it. Um, I got this actually in an Easter basket. That's no way. Ago. That's how long ago I got that. Anyway. <laughs> So there's songs like uh, Stranger and Body and Candy, those kind of songs. I didn't love those as much at first, yeah. but man, they grew on me too. I can hear that and go immediately right back to that video oh, as soon yeah. as I hear it. Just like, for sure, for just, sure. There's something about this was so catchy and so like unique too. Like, I think it was you that was telling me about like, on the, the, car, the guitar player only used the bottom three, three strings, strings yep. or something and like the that. The bass player only had two strings, yeah. yep. That's, yeah. that's cool, man. And, you know, that's, again, the creativity. That's one of the things I love about this album is they just did something unique and different. Yep. And it's still fun, and it still feels a little more like punk rock yeah. with the pop in it. You know, like, I mean, it's great. I mean, this album to me was just so much fun. I, I had to put it on there. Mm -hmm. so. All right, number four. What do we got? XO by Elliot Smith. Elliot Smith. Smith. All right. Again, you know, the, the creativity here is what really pushed this forward to me. Uh, man, the guy could write. He wrote some great songs. He does great melodies and harmonies. And with a few exceptions, he played every instrument, every part, sang every part on the album. Um, just a fantastic musician and writer. I, I, I love this album. Uh, if I'm going to speak about some specific stuff, you know, Sweet Adeline, his previous albums to this were all acoustic. And so Sweet Adeline comes in. Very acoustic. It sounds just like any other Elliott Smith album. And then about halfway through, it kicks in, and you can tell he's in the studio. <laughs> and, I mean, it's, it's, it's something special. And then Tomorrow, Tomorrow, I, I just think that's, you know, some great picking. Um, waltz number two, I always used to play that song on guitar. That's just a fun little waltz. Baby Britain's probably the poppiest song on here, and it's, um, yeah. it's just a fun little song. Independence Day, Bled White, I love both of those songs so much. Um, Waltz number one, that's beautiful. I'm pretty sure that's a, in the Lydian. Um, oh Well, Okay, I think that's a really pretty song. So, yeah, I, I really love this album. Pretty much everything on it. I, I can listen to and get something out of it new every time. So, nice. Yeah, I, I'm a huge Elliot Those albums are always good. Yeah, I, I'll say that, you know, it's a moody album, and so it's, you know, not for everybody or maybe not for everybody at all times. Yeah. But uh, when you're in the mood for something like that, I mean, this is... We'll be right down your alley because this is good. Nice. All right. Number three. OK Computer. Yep. Radiohead OK Computer. I knew it was nice. going to be in the top five. I didn't know where yep. we were end up. So what is, of these 12 songs, do you think is the most underrated? Or is there an underrated one? Because everyone knows, like, OK Computer, Radiohead. If you're going to listen to Radiohead, start there. Well, I think, yeah, that's tough. <clears throat> um, I think a lot of people, you know, Hear Paranoid Android or Karma Police, remember those videos, or, or you know, I mean, oh, yeah. those, those are really big songs, and so even if you hear them now, I mean, it's easy to like those songs, but for me, my favorite one on there is No Surprises. I love nice. that song. Um, I think there's a lot of good songs on here that are softer and eclectic that might get overlooked to some degree, like, I mean, Exit Music for a Film's great, Let Down's great, Subterranean Homesick Alien, all those are great songs, but again, sometimes you have to be in the mood for them. Um, yeah. Dude, I love this album. So good. So good. All right. So let's move on to number two. Hey, oh. Hey, you knew it. Oh, there it is. There it is. <laughs> More in, ways than one. In all of its glory. <laughs> I just can't. I'm, I gotta yeah. look away. Uh, you know, I feel bad. The thing is, is that this is their album cover. Yeah. This is what you get. And Man. so. And he's got a mustache. I, hey. <laughs> So with this album, this is one of the ones that like I can listen to all the way through, but it wasn't, when I look at everything from the 90s, like I just overplayed the crap out of this album. It was one of those albums that was just oh. so 
not even the word so too good for like where it was at what it was what was going on around it mm-hmm. it's like everybody used something from this album or from in utero as like a touchstone to what they were what about do, to oh, do oh, yeah, so you sure. look at songs like okay sounds like teen spirit right off the top dang it ain't whatever i mean great opening track you know even though we've heard it a million times killer you know? and then yeah. after that you're like okay in bloom man in bloom's what got me that i was love the, I, so many songs on this album I, yeah come as you are into breed into lithium into I poly lithium. i mean my god dude i love breed breed's one of my favorite songs on this album all right so let's move on to my number one here what is it what is the my favorite album of the 90s fashion Ta-da. nugget by cake Look, I love this album. I really do. And I paired it up against every single album that I listened to on this. Um, I would listen to one of those or maybe one or two of those and then go back and listen to Fashion Nugget. Fashion Nugget. And, and it was really hard to pick between the Nirvana album and Fashion Nugget too. But when it came down to it, mm-hmm. I asked myself, again, if you could have this one or this one for the rest of your life, which one would you pick? And for me, it's Fashion Nugget. But yeah, I love this album. Just from the very first, you know... In Frank Sinatra, yep. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. man, I love that song. <laughs> and then, I mean, God, you go into the distance, you know, which I mean, yeah. everybody loves that song. You, know, you can't deny that one. Friend is a four-letter word. I did not get that when I was a kid. I was like, I what? end. <laughs> it's what like, how many letters? I, the e. And then Open Book, man, I, I love the intro for Open Book. <laughs> I think that is one of the coolest intros on the album. And the song's great, too. Um, Daria, I always thought that was a cool song. Race Car Yaya's. Oh my God, I love that song. <laughs> Dude, that was one when I first got this album. I listened to that so much. I mean, that's just a badass song, man. <laughs> and it's only like a minute and a half long, but I love it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. Um, I Will Survive. I'm, I'm going to say this about that. I, I really like their version of it. And I've read that Gloria Gaynor absolutely hates their version of that song. <laughs> really? Because they dropped the F-bomb in it, and oh. she's, she, she don't like that. But... I knew that was a good song yeah. before I ever even listened to the disco version of it, you know? And then, uh, and, and the same is kind of true for country music on this album. You got stick shifts and safety belts and sad songs and waltzes. And it just, you know, the acousticness of the album, it has kind of a country feel to it. So nice. this album not only opened me up a little bit to disco and, and all these great bass lines on here, but to country too. And so this definitely had a huge impact on me for sure i love this album man i really do um and then you get down i mean there's a good cover of perhaps 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 on there it's coming down that's a pretty song nugget man nugget. you gotta love nugget, there's nugget. <laughs> you know i mean who, who doesn't want to just scream shut the f up you know i mean that's <laughs> you gotta love nugget nugget's fantastic um she'll come back to me that's a great little song italian leather sofa and then sad songs and waltzes I didn't realize that was a Willie Nelson song until very recently. So I didn't realize it until today. <laughs> yeah, until this very moment. That's yeah, right. Definitely the top of my list. It's something that I could listen to any time, and I I feel that way about a lot of their albums. There's definitely some Cake fans out there, but huh. um, you know, I know they're they're maybe not as popular as. I'll be honest. I didn't, like I didn't give this album much. I'll be completely honest. I didn't really give this album much. Like even back in the day, yeah. I was just like, oh, really? The distance, okay. Oh man, I'll listen to it. I'll get through it. Yeah, really. But, I mean, I don't know. I just didn't give it much. And so, like, I don't know, man. You bring it back up, like, a couple of weeks ago. I was like, cake. Forgot about them. Yeah. I totally mean, forgot about those guys. Dude, I, I, this album, and again, it could be because I was a kid when I was listening to it. You know, yeah. it could be that that something about it stuck with me, you know, and that's For why sure. I still love it. But I still rock out to this album every time I put it on. <laughs> So I think that's it. That's our top five here. Um, any other albums you want to mention? Mm, I mean, maybe... We talked about like Garth Brooks. I remember yeah. that had come up a couple of times. Yeah. I mean, also in the 90s, I feel like... I'm sure that this was true in other decades, but like in the 90s, I just remember there being so many huge one-hit wonders that would pop up a couple of... maybe a year and a half. Cool. And then you'd be like... What happened to these guys? And sometimes those albums are good. Like I think of uh, Semi Sonics Closing Time. Yeah. That that album was actually decent. Marcy Playground, Sex and Candy. That album was, I mean, I like Marcy Playground. They put on a good show. Um, I mean, there was a ton, you know. I'm not going to be able to think of all of them. Uh, Oh, who sings good? Uh, Better Than Ezra. Better Than Ezra. And I I liked Better Than Ezra. I definitely liked them. Um, I didn't get into them until a little bit later, but yeah. Yeah. You got anything else? Nope. That's it for me. 
All right. Well, we really do appreciate you watching. I hope you all have a great Christmas and happy holidays and all that. And yeah. um, until next time, take it easy and keep playing.